Happy holidays, everyone. Welcome to another edition of This Is Your Moment. I'm your host, LaToya Foster, and do we have a show in store for you today? The theme of today's show, it ain't over till it's over. I bet you can't guess who our guest is today. Ah, you got it. None other than gospel sensation, Morette Brown-Clark. Now she's made hits that we have loved, loved, loved over the years, but there's a story behind all of those hits. She's had quite the journey and she's sharing it with us on today's show. Coming up next, you'll hear it from her. The journey, the success, the sacrifices, the challenges, and it ain't over till it's over. Take a look. Morette Brown-Clark, thank you so much for joining us on This Is Your Moment. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I am so excited and honored that you could join us here today. Let me no. tell you a couple thank, of reasons. Thank you for I having me, honestly. You look fabulous. I'm just so excited. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Look, once we're off this program, we're going to switch paintings in the back. Yeah. We're going to make that happen. We're going to make that transaction. <laughs> This is my uh, COVID church scenery here. So look, I have to do. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> I I'm get it. Right in front of here. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Well, you know, Moret, first and foremost, we got a couple of emails that asked about you from our viewers. Oh, nice. And said, you've got to give the viewers what they want, right? Okay. <laughs> so that's number one. Two, I can tell you how your music has touched and inspired me over the years, right. especially, and I got to be honest. It ain't over. Yeah. That one right there, it, it's just a powerful song that has always touched me in a very special way. So look, so I'm riding in the car and it comes on. I'm doing my own little mini concert. Clearly, I can't sing like you, girl. I can't, but I sure give it my best while I'm driving. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love but when it. I thought about the verses and the lyrics to that song and how powerful it is and what it means even pre-pandemic, but especially right. right now, as we are going through so many challenging times, and when people hear that song, how important it is to them, I said, you know what, I got to make this happen. So I want to talk to you about that. Talk about It Ain't Over and all of your hits and, you know, where you drew your inspiration from when you were uh, recording these songs. Tell us more about that. So I'll tell you about um, It Ain't Over. I was um, preparing for my first live recording. Okay. And um, I had... I was on a record label, but then they sold themselves to another record label and everything was just kind of mumbo jumbo. But I decided to just kind of move ahead with rehearsals and just, you know, making music. And um, Anthony Brown, everyone knows now is Anthony Brown of Group Therapy. Right. Um, he was my, uh, the, the vocals for the project. And I was dragging him everywhere I was going, um, being a mentor to him. Wow. And one day we were actually on our way out of town to a choir rehearsal uh, for the Wilmington Chester Mass Choir. And he said, I have a, another song for your record because he'd already written Sovereign God for me. So I'm okay. not sure if you're familiar with that, but right. he'd already written that. And I was like, please, this is amazing. Um, but we were in, my, in a truck driving and he started singing I know the odds look stacked against you. I know this seems there's no way out. I know the issue seems unchangeable and okay. that there's no reason to shout, but the impossible is mm -hmm. God's chance to work a miracle. Right. It ain't over. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm recording that. Like it literally was birthed out of him. And I recorded it. Um, Asaph Ward produced the heck out of it. Yeah. Shouts out to him. Um, the singers, as you can hear, group therapy, murdered the song um, and it just really is a, a timely song and a timeless song the right production the right vocals um thankfully the right interpretation um from me god just breathed on me um mm -hmm. and it breathed on the entire thing and it just is what is the result of all of us just yielding our gifts to god and him breathing on it and it literally is standing the test of time. And I'm just really grateful that he used me 
to deliver that message. It's not a new message. It's not nothing we've ever heard before. Now haven't heard before, you know, it ain't over till the fat lady sings or it ain't right. over. Hold on. I mean, we've been in church. So every pastor, every preacher, everybody can pull from that. But it was something about when I was able to record it and it pushed out to radio and people found it on the record and it just ministered to so many people that I was quite overwhelmed by its impact. That's right. um, I cannot tell you, yeah, I cannot count the number of stories that have come to me like this mm -hmm. or by email or text message or people right. stopping me in the street or all of that. And that has been very encouraging to me. So I'm grateful for that. Well, can you think of a time in your life where you had to <laughs> listen to your own words, your own song and say, oh, it ain't over till so God says it's over? Yeah. So here's the thing. That record was recorded. Um, and we recorded that record in 2004 and it did not get released until 2007. Wow. And I literally was in my closet on the floor singing It Ain't Over to myself oh because my it felt like it was over. It looked like it was over. We had so many technical difficulties the night of the recording and then past that, literally the hard drive where all the songs were on like crashed oh my god yeah i was in the studio doing my overdubs we had to send the, the hard drive to a computer geek in virginia and pray that they could at least recover everything mm. but then asa ford had to go back and put everything where it belongs so we're talking every vocal every instrument right. every like literally piece the songs back together again and so i know the enemy uh, was trying to get in the way really of the of the entire record but particularly he knew the impact that that song would have on people and he right. tried to stop it so I was in my closet singing mm. and over with three kids not singing um, my husband kind of carrying the load and wondering why God was just delaying my process but you know mm. for encouragement for somebody delayed is not denied and if God has set that thing up it will definitely come to pass. And I'm a living witness. And that wait, that three year wait for a song that has literally fed my family from 2009 wow. till 2020. Mm, wow. So it was released in 2007. Radio started playing it in 2009. And then I don't go anywhere without singing that song. So it, just that, yeah. No. I was gonna say just that wait felt right. like eternity. But that weight created what would carry me on to this year and to next year for my lifetime. I will be singing It Ain't Over until mm -hmm. I'm 90 because yeah. that message rings true. So, yeah. That is the God honest truth. And I'm so glad you talked about that because, you know, when you're going through your storms and going through your challenges and when it's taking so long, you're saying, God, what is taking so long you, you say you won't deny me you say you haven't forgotten me but you don't see a way out mm -hmm. and it's really you know god's timing it's not our timing it's his timing and yeah. and you're a living testimony of that especially as we're talking about it ain't over you know yeah. you had to wait it out and but look at it now yeah and and going forward yes. all that how it touches so many people's lives yeah. Yeah. that's just that's just a blessing no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And well, that's about how all my songs come. So I try to record songs that sing to me first, mm. um, speak to me first, and then I know that I can convey it. So you get songs and you kind of, okay, well, I can sing it, but I never want to record th things like that. If it's not speaking to me and I don't feel like I can um, present it uh, in a believable manner, Right. then I don't want to sing it. So that's why I always include a hymn on all my records mm. um, because those are the songs that, you know, speak to you no matter what. And I always just try to have the songs that speak to me first. And then I know that I can convey that. So at the end of the day, whoever is supposed to get it, like there's a bullseye on your head for it ain't over or sovereign God, or right. um, I just want to praise you. Like you got a bull bullseye on your head that my music is coming at you and whoever it's not for, that's okay too. But who it's for, I'm praying that it gets to them. Amen. Amen. You know there is a serious calling on your life when a paycheck just ain't enough. 
Now, Loretta is getting ready to share her story with us when she looked around at her life and things were going great, going swell. Paychecks were coming in, but she said, you know what? Even that paycheck just ain't enough. Have you been there before? Take a look. You know what I love while I was doing my research on you and, you know, getting ready for this interview, I love when I read, you know, as I was going back, I, I went all the way back uh, when you got started. And I want to talk about that. Yes, I, we got to talk me, about when you see, got started. Let me Let's see go. if you went all the way back. I'm going to see how good your research Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at one of the bios and it was talking to uh, how you were not happy with just a paycheck. You yeah. wanted more, you needed more, and that's when you really turned to uh, music and getting into the music industry. Can you talk a little bit about that when you said, oh no, this doesn't fulfill yeah. me, this doesn't make me happy. Yeah, you know, we all need a paycheck, but that's just not enough. So I grew up singing, grew up in the church, and so music was just something literally that we did. I took piano lessons. Uh, and I would say, you know, uh, that was torture. Singing was torture. Piano really? lessons. Were torture. But you don't, you don't know as a child, mm -hmm. what is good for you um, as an adult. And so I'm grateful to my parents for uh, putting that musicality in us. I'm grateful for them dragging us to church. And so I, um, and I did all of the things that you aspire to do. You go to school, you get good grades, you you know, you go to college and you go to college. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so you know, I graduated, you know, I got a degree, I got a job, I had a car, I had a boyfriend who I later married. I had great roommates, a place to stay. I had a great church home that I loved. And so everything was going fine. Right. But fine was just fine. And so fine didn't have purpose in it. Fine didn't define my destiny. Fine didn't tell me why it is God put me here at this time mm -hmm. in this body, right? You know, uh, a spiritual being have a, having a, a, a mortal experience. Why am I here? Why am I passing through? And right. so that's really where I was like, okay, I got to find out what I'm here to do because I don't want to miss it. I don't want to live and die and whatever I was supposed to do in between that it doesn't get done. Right. And I literally prayed a simple prayer. What is it? And he told me, you have to sing and tell people about me. And yeah. I, it was like, since you, since, since he saved me, I wanted to go get somebody else. And it literally was, okay, well you have to sing. And I was like, Oh, I have to sing. And you okay. didn't want to not, I, you know, I have a twin brother. Um, okay. and so he was known as the singer growing up. Okay. Um, he was a singer and I was his musician. So if you go up to now, it's different. But if you go up to my friends that I grew up with in New York originally, they'll tell you like, oh, no, Marette's making a record. No, Maurice is making the record. That's wow. he's the singer. She just plays for him. Wow. But I was, so I was never like pushing myself. I was not. I'm going to be the next. Or I'm going to do this or whatever. But it did resonate with my spirit. And I knew that when I sang, hmm there was an impact on people right. and that couldn't be ignored or denied. So whatever that was, of course we know now it's the anointing and I hope pray that God never takes that away from me. But the way he's given me to posture songs and present songs left an impact on people. And it's kind of annoying too, <laughs> because a lot of people cry when I sing. I was like, hey, I can't be annoyed, girl. That is the spirit move. And I'm yeah, a yeah, but it's like, sometimes you want, uh, you know, like a woo. Yeah, but right. I don't get those. I get the, you know, people looking so sad and they're crying. I'm just like, I must really stink because oh. <laughs> everybody's face looks like they just ate something. But it literally is people are listening. The words are ministering to them. Jesus is singing through me. That's and right. so if that is what I'm doing a, and, and, and I get an occasional applause, Right. Um, then I'm okay with that. And so that literally was it. It was defining what I was destined to do while he purposed me here. And it just happened that the will of God for my life matched up to my desire. Because once he told me what his will was for me, then I took off running. I wanted the thing. I wanted to tell people about Jesus. I wanted to make his name great. And that's really why.
Now, Moret clearly knew and understood that there was a serious calling on her life. But coming up next, Moret shares with us when she knew for sure that she heard the voice of God. When did you know this was his will? When do you believe you might have heard the voice of God for the very first time? Um, that year after I worked a year out of college. Okay. And so I heard him like I'm talking to you. Wow. You know, go tell, tell them about me. Mm. It was like, since I saved you, go save somebody else. Go mm. get somebody else. Right. And I was like, oh, okay. And, I and did you question at that time? Did you question, was that really I did God? You did? I did. I just took off running. Literally, I got home. I was um, traveling. I'd gone, actually, I'd gone to California to try to get the answer just to kind of clear my mind. Really? By, my, mm -hmm, by the time I came back, I had my answer. And then the next day, I called my mother and asked her to borrow some money because then my prayer was, since this is what you called me to do, I know my parents love me. I know my siblings love me. I know the people that know me love me, but I need this to go to people that I don't know, to people that I might never meet. I was like, take this as far as it could go, please. Cause I don't want to just be for my family. Now if that's who it was supposed to be for or my local church or for, you know, whatever that, then I would be fine with that. But I know that he answered the desire of my heart because I followed his will. Wow. And you were struggling with it because you said you went to California. So what was it that sent you there and then brought you back and said, okay, I, I got it. What um, made you go out to California? It was just to just get away. Okay. You know, to get away from the job, from the house, the car, the, the roommate, okay. the boyfriend. The, I just went and literally have a girlfriend that lived out there and um, her and her husband let me sleep on their couch for three days and I okay. just was like talk to me like talk to me right and he did wow that's yeah. a great story that's a great story and here we are years yeah. later we've seen other artists come and go what do you believe have been the keys to your longevity in this industry ah the grace of God mm. God is so gracious to me in spite of me it is his grace it is mercy it is his favor the, the, the fact that I'm on this conversation with you today is favor. I didn't ask for it. It came yeah. looking for me in my inbox, in my email. Girl, I was knocking. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Right. And I appreciate even, even that because I've been on my COVID, like chilling in the house kind of thing. Really? And even, yeah. And even when COVID hit, I was like, okay, we're done here. Like, you know, is this it because I can't go tell anybody and I don't you know I can't figure this out and um but I'm and I got went through that kind of am I still supposed to be doing this I don't want to call it a funk but a little bit okay, and, um, okay that took a couple of months to get out of but now I'm like nope you have to continue to do what it is I called you to do so I'm looking forward to what next looks like and still telling people about Jesus I was going to ask you about that because we're all kind of uh, shifting our ways of doing things right now, embracing technology. Yes. How have you been able to navigate through this COVID storm? Technology. Ah. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. <laughs> um, um, you know, I've been doing um, some videos for churches. Everybody's looking for, for content now. Um, and so I've been fortunate. Again, I haven't really gone out looking for it, but people, um, God places me in people's hearts. Now, clearly over the span of Moret's career, she's had some moments. But coming up next, she's going to share her defining moment, the sacrifices she had to make to get there. And before we close out the show, She's got some surprises in store for us. Take a look. Let me ask you, you've okay. had a stellar career. Oh. You've had major accomplishments. You've sung with the best, Hezekiah Walker, C.C. Winans, and a, a number of others, Richard Smallwood. As you think back over your journey, what would you point to as the highlight, your greatest moments? Um, I've, had, I've had a few. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but 
but the one that always stands out is when I won my first stellar award. Okay. Um, and the reason why it stands out is because, you know, you always think that, that certain things are just for certain people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm never going to have this. I'm never going to accomplish this. I'm never going to be this because that, huh? Did you have doubt? I never, I didn't even send my brain to it. Wow. Because I was just like, well, I'm just going to sing and and talk about Jesus and it's going to be what it is. I'd never even sent my brain to that. You know, other than like when you're watching the war shows at home and you're staying in front of the TV and you're like, I want to thank God. (laughs) You know, at that moment, that's right. That's right. Not, yeah. <laughs> Time <laughs> stops when the award shows are on. It's just like, ah. but for me, I was like, that probably will never happen because that happens to famous people. That happens to stars. It happens to, you know, artists that are big or, or just whatever. And so I remember my mom and I, again, she's a real MVP. That's right. Um, talking on the phone. Yeah. Talking on the phone and literally like busting out laughing, like girl, you know, I, we're going to go to the Stella Awards and I'm going to hold the baby and oh. we're going to go. And I was like, yeah, ha, ha, ha. yeah, it was the funniest thing. And I remember how I felt like that's never going to happen. Wow. And then I got nominated and then I went to the awards and then I was like, well, I'll go, but they'll certainly won't do my category on, you know, on TV. It'll be on the pre-show that, you know, nobody knows about. You see the little blip afterwards like you know previously awarded so I was like it won't be on the show then my category both of my categories I was nominated were on the show so I won on tv and I lost on tv but (laughs) that's all All, everything you were on tv let's start there everything (laughs) just lined up and I was just like when it was time for them I've actually won best new artist that year and it literally was and the nominees are blah 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 and when they said my name, I was like, did they just say my name? My husband stood up. He was screaming. My family was there. They were oh. yelling. Everybody in the audience, it was in Atlanta this year. So that's how long ago this was. Okay. Like everybody, I remember seeing everybody in the audience stand up. My <laughs> friends were crying in the industry. Everybody was just like clapping. Oh. And the thing about that is, was it was something that happened to me that I never thought could happen to me. Mm -hmm. And it was validated by the response of the audience, my very first record. But what had happened was I had in the trenches singing with Richard Smallwood, singing with Wilmington Chester, singing with Reverend Timothy Wright, singing with Daniel Winans, all of those late nights at the studio, all of the, you know, being nice and and showing up and putting my own money into my music ministry and, mm-hmm. and taking pictures and going in the studio and then going to work and working yes. two jobs, a full-time yep. job and a part-time job. Ooh. So I can use the full-time job to pay my bills and the part-time job to pay for studio time. Like all of these things mm. came flashing back mm. and to this day. And it was like, I just won a Stella Award. That was, to me, that was like, okay, I'm good. You coming to get me now? Like, what's going on? But what he did was he put a stamp on it, validated it himself, and then he allowed other people to validate it. And I just kept going. To this day, I just kept going. And I have seen him work miracles in my life, in my music ministry. You know, as big a day as the Stella Awards were, I've been places to go sing and all they had was a CD player or a, a boom box. Right. And I've been places where they had no microphone. I've been places where the power went out. I've been places mm. where the microphone went out. Mm. And, I've been, and so all of that, Stella Award, singing to a boom box, all makes what makes the plan that God has for your life. And you have to be okay. Mm-hmm. That's you right. have to be okay from the bottom to the top. Mm, I love that story. Yeah. I love that story. You know, and that's what people need to hear right now, Moret, because listen to what you just told us. You had the full-time job, mm-hmm. the part-time job. You were going into the studios. You were investing your own money. Someone out there, someone watching this show today is doing the exact same thing. Somebody is ready to throw the towel in. Because yeah. they said, I don't see it coming to pass. I, I, I can't live like this. I can't keep doing it this way. 
but you're a living testimony of what, what can, what's possible. Yeah. And I will tell you this, that I just knew, like people ask me, well, how did you know? I just knew what God had for me. Mm. And so every step that I took was a yes to what I knew he already had told me what was going to be. Right. So I would encourage um, anybody that's listening. Sometimes what we want is not what he wants for us. And then that way you're kind of spinning your wheels and stuff. Now we can all aspire to be whatever we want to be. But at the end of the day, if that's not his will for us, mm -hmm. we're just going to be spinning wheels. And, and we've got to figure out a way to be all right with that. My daughter, um, she's 20 now, but I took her with me to sing at a banquet. And um, this is one of my favorite stories too. She was like 13 at the time. And I was like, come on, you're going to go with me and you're going to, I'm going to see if you know how to eat with a fork, a real fork, a real knife, you know, <laughs> what, what gold, the napkin over your lap. Like I had a little etiquette class for her oh, and I had to go sing. Yeah. And um, I was on my way to go sing. And she said, um, she said, I need to tell you something. I said, oh, okay. You know, you got to be careful with the kids. And she said, I don't want you to take this the wrong way. So then I was like, oh, Lord, what are you getting ready to say to me? She said, you may not be as famous as Kirk Franklin or Mary Mary. And she, I think she named one other person. She said, but to the people that know you, you matter. Can't thank you enough. Look, I really want to put you on the spot. I really want to ask you to just give us a little bit of it ain't over. Just a, a, a snippet. Can you give us a little something before we go? Yeah, but the impossible mm. is God's chance to work a miracle, a miracle. So just know it ain't over. Until God says it's over, it ain't over. Until God says it's done, no, 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 it ain't over. Until God says it's over, you please keep fighting hmm. until the victory is won. I hope you were blessed by today's program. I know I was. Sometimes you just need to hear it. You already know it, but you just need to hear that it ain't over until it's over. God has the final say, and I cannot thank my girl Morette Brown Clark enough for stopping by and reinforcing that message. Morette, thank you so much, girl. We love you and appreciate you. Kevin Adele, Word Network, and WADL, we cannot thank you enough for this moment. We love and appreciate you so much. Thank you. For those of you who would like to become a partner with This Is Your Moment, you can always cash app us, or you can email me at latoyafoster14 at gmail.com for more options and details. Until next time, until we meet again, stay prayed up, stay blessed, and we'll talk soon. Take good care.